Laila de Lima nakapagpiyansa. Apex Summit, kasado na. At Duterte, sinapina. Kum, kum, kum! Kums of Wormy, this is a war. Joseph, and welcome to New Sighting Worthy Recap Weekly Edition number 25. We have tons to cover for the third week of November 2023, so skip the time stamps provided if it piques your interest. Okay, but then for the blazing side summation. Here are some PH News commentary for your convenience. Laila de Lima granted and free on bail. Piniyaga na ng Muntin Lupa Regional Trial Court ang pagpiyansa ng dating senador at dating Commission on Human Rights chairperson noong panahon ni Arroyo, I'm not really sure, si Laila de Lima matapos ang anim na taong pagkakakulong with trumped-up charges and vengeance from the previous administration. Duterte, I think the bill was set to like 300,000 pesos per person na akusado sa nasawing Agreement. Pero at least after Pinayagan, after 6 years, 8 months, and 21 days, or 2,424 days, at least according to Laila de Lima. After 6 years, 8 months, and 21 days, after 2,424 days, I'm now free. Sweet, sweet, freedom. Thank you, Lord. Nakalaya na siya. And the fact that she was given the permission or she was granted bail proves how these from the charges na pinatong laban sa kanya ng administrasyong Duterte or at least allegedly unti-unti na bumabagsak yung hold or yung stranglehold ni Duterte sa Philippine government especially with the House of Representatives na bumuelta sa kanya laban sa pinagsasabay niya tungkol sa confidential funds ng Kongreso pork barrels and dahil nagalit si Duterte na yung anak niya hindi pinayagan magkaroon ng 650 million pesos in confidential fund. As of now, ex-Senator Laila de Lima was granted and free on bail while she is still facing the third and final case against her na final ng Administrasyong Duterte SC ng whoever filed the petition patungkol sa kanyang umanoy connection sa illegal na droga sa bilibid. Of course, na dismiss yung dalawa sa mga kaso while naghari pa yung former President Rodrigo Duterte kasi nga he was already losing grip of the power that he once held so mightily during the past years, especially since the COVID pandemic. As of now, two of the three cases was dismissed dahil nga sa obvious lack of evidence at alleged collusion of government agencies para lang maipatahimik ang opposition senator na si Laila de Lima. Maalala rin natin last time, I think June or July, I'm not really sure. Pero last time, yung gumawa ng affidavit regarding her alleged connection dun sa mga drug kingpin sa Bilibid sa Muntinlupa was recanted and the whistleblower admitted na pinressure siya to implicate de Lima in that particular exchange. Meron pa nga yung tilay walang hanggang revolving door ng mga judges na nagpe-preside sa kaso ni de Lima just because of how precautious this case will be. Ang umahawak sa ikatlo at huling kaso ni Dalima, or at least originally, ay yung kapatid nung sinabing gumawa ng falsified at pressured statement ng whistleblower. Kumbaga, yung brother ng judge ay yung nagpumilit, or at least yun yung sinabi ng whistleblower na nag ng statement niya at, at ang pag-sign na affidavit. Kumbaga, yung brother ng judge na yun, yun yung mismong nag-pressure para mag-falsify ng accounts yung whistleblower laban kay Dilima. So, the fact that the judge did not inhibit himself right at that point was clearly a misstep. And due to public pressure, nag-leave na rin siya. Nag-inhibit na rin siya sa kasong ito. Kasi nga, conflict of interest. Yung humawak sa ikatlo at huling kaso ni Dilima ay kapatid nung gumawa ng recanted at falsified affidavit na nag implicate ng koneksyon ni Dalima sa droga. So, as we can see, malalang conflict of interest which was resolved by putting the judge who dismissed Dalima twice of her previous charges sa huling kaso laban sa kanya while well, the judge that was supposed to preside over her case was recused. Kumbaga, this judge na pumalit sa kapatid ng gumawa ng falsified affidavit at pressured affidavit ng mga whistleblower ang pumalit sa kanya. And this judge was also the judge that presided over the two cases kung saan na-dismiss si Dalima. Umanga naman yung prosecution dahil dito kasi nga baka raw may bias ang judge na inabsuelto si Dalima ng dalawang beses. If not for per personal reasons or political aspiration of reasons, baka hindi ma-separate ng judge yung dalawang cases na basically the same thing as the last case. Pero you know, just to be safe, he recused himself as well. Kasi nga may agam-agam na 
mamimix niya yung innocence ni Dilema sa first and second charges sa huli on trumped up illegal drug charges. Kaya nirecuse niya na rin yung sarili niya kahit na yung agam-agam ng prosecution ay unfounded. Ipinagdiwang ang pagpayag ng korte sa Muntinlupa na magbayad ng piyansa upang pansamantalang makalaya ang dating mamabatas dahil isa si Dilema sa mga staunch opposition ng bansa laban sa administrasyong Duterte even before the issue of alleged extrajudicial killings and assassinations under Duterte's administration and even before naging kapartido ni Dalima ang mga dilawan. Unang magtagpo ang landas nila Duterte at Dalima sa Davao noong si Laila Dalima ay ang Commission on Human Rights Chairperson ng Bansa from I think 2008 to 2010 appointed by the then President at currently the post Deputy Speaker and Senior Deputy Speaker Pampanga Representative Gloria Macapagal Arroyo. Gloria appointed Dalima from 2008 to 2010 on the position of chairperson ng Commission on Human Rights. Sa kanyang short stint as the Human Rights Commissioner, inimbestigahan niya ang mga high-profile cases na we might all know, like that of the retired General Jovito Palparan, even if she was his kin, regarding the extrajudicial abductions and killings of government critics. Pati na rin yung pagbaprobe na sa infamous high-profile case of the Magandanao Massacre that killed like 58 victims 32 of which are journalists who were on their way to file the Certificate of Candidacy para sa isang kandidato. I think that's the Ampatuans. Women and 32 journalists because they had this philosophy in Islam where they regard women on, on high standard and the fact that there are 32 journalists would make it so that the convoy that will be serving the Certificate of Candidacy would be less attacked than if they did it in person. Not to mention the dozens of journalists on the scene. But they still massacred all of them. The Maginero Massacre was even dubbed by the Committee to Protect Journalists as the single deadliest event for journalists in history. And of course, the main gist of it all, the probe of the Davao Death Squad implicating then-mayor of Davao City at former President Rodrigo Duterte in again, extrajudicial killings of suspects without due process which is akin to how Duterte's administration has also been accused on his six-year term. Kumaga, they're eerily similar, so what might we think of this? Tumakbo at nanalo siyang senador matapos ang kanyang limang taong pagsiserve as the Justice Secretary of the Philippines under Noynoy Aquino, which started the whole case against her. She won a seat in the Senate under Duterte's entire term, kung saan siya'y ikinulong back in 2017 for illegal drug charges, noong prines niya ang infamous drug on war at numinous extra judicial killings na nangyayari sa time ni Duterte in less than a year in his presidency bago siya alisin sa committee as a chair of the Senate Justice and Human Rights. Even Manny Pacquiao has his hands dirty. So we can definitely see the pattern of a vengeful person of power, Duterte, using their influence to bend the law through the will most convenient. May incident pa nga na sa Camp Krame, ginawa pa siyang hostage ng nakalabas na Abu Sayyaf or the Dawla Islamia terrorist na ginawa siyang hostage. Also, kapatido ni Duterte si Laila Dilima kasi nga dilawan din sa Duterte up until 2016 presidential elections where he lashed out against the establishment and the Liberal Party, lalo na yung tuwid na daan, as a populist politician taking the status quo and corrupt politicians down. Yung mga taong nasa establishment na matagal na sa posisyon nila pero wala pa rin nangyayari. They're still instilling corruption and all of that. Yari, yari, yara. That's basically his message as the foul mouth but very popular populist president or presidential candidate at the time. Ang paggrant ng bail ng korte kay Laila Dilima is a good sign of political opponents at ang kanilang imprisonment as the administration lashed out against their opposition to be at the very least weakening, kumbaga as I said earlier, humihina na yung grasp ng, I think, tyrannical as we would call it, hold on power ng mga Duterte or at least ni Duterte. Because BBM has less personal beef with the establishment and especially Laila Dilima than Duterte's regime. But I won't deny na I was pretty surprised and relieved na there wasn't or uh, there hasn't been any attempt at her life by independent actors or disgruntled supporters of ideologies or leaders. I don't know, yung mga DDS na talagang galit kay Laila Dilima. And the fact that there hasn't been any assassination attempts is a good indication, although that is literally the bare 
minimum the highest bar you could have cleared if we're talking limbo or the lowest bar you could have cleared Rafael Consin Jr. Maharlika Investment Corporation CEO appoint itinalaga na ni President Ferdinand Marcos Jr. ang mamumuno as the first president at chief executive officer o CEO ng Maharlika Investment Corporation na mamahala sa kontrobersyal ng Maharlika Investment Fund Act of 2023 that was passed last July 2023 matatanda ang sinuspende mismo ni President Marcos ang implementation at rules and regulations matapos may makitang gusot sa nasabing Maharlika Investment Fund Bill na kanyang nilagdaan matapos itong maipasa speedily ng Unilateral House of Representatives at Senate just before his State of the Nation address around July, I think July 18 and then the sauna was July 25. Nas may get 125 billion pesos ang initial fund na kanyang pangangasiwaan with the subsequent 500 billion pesos na kukunin sa iba't ibang ahensya at bangko ng gobyerno from Land Bank, Development Bank of the Philippines, Banko Sentral ng Pilipinas, Government Owned and Controlled Corporations o GOCCs, Pagcor at marami pang iba as their source of funds for corruption at este investment. Marami po maboros sa pagtatalaga ng presidente kay CEO Rafael Consing dahil sa kanyang experience, current quote, sa pangangasiwa ng financial institutions ngunit Marami rin ang kumwestiyon dahil binago ang implementing rules and regulations para sa pagpili ng CEO para sa Maharlika Investment Fund Act of 2023 na nagre-require ng advanced degree or PhD sa economics or finance upang maging presidente at CEO ng Maharlika Investment Corporation bago siya itinalaga. Not to mention na kayang piliin ni President Ferdinand Marcos Jr. kung sino yung nasa Board of Trustees ng nasabing Maharlika Investment Corporation. Naipasa ito sa House of Representatives at Senado. Then, at the last minute, biglang pinalitan ni BBM yung mga implementing rules and regulation na nan doon para ma-ensure na walang funny business na mangyari. So even with the unilateral congress, hindi niya pa rin magawa yung gusto niyang magawa. Which is why, kailangan niya pa under the table, palitan yung mga mechanics ng implementing rules and regulations para sa pili ng mga opisyal naggagastos sa 500 billion peso fund para sa first year ng fund na ito ng kaban ng bayan. As you can see, maraming funny business na maaring mangyari just by bypassing the Senate and the House of Representatives na, to be honest, laging nasa side mo. You basically bypass the people without even needing the need to bypass their representatives na pinili ng tao kasi nga align sila sa position mo. Not to mention ang kanyang history with cases related to fraud, money laundering, tax evasion, or misappropriation of funds na kanyang sinabi ay na-dismiss na. Although, I think 1MDB from Malaysia, remember that? Sabina versus Duterte SMNI. Matapos idemanda ni Alliance of Concerned Teachers Party List Representative at Deputy Minority Speaker na si Congresswoman Franz Castro over his alleged death threat sa kanya sa isang programa ng SMNI dahil sa pagtanggal ng kanyang anak, Vice President at Department of Education Secretary Sara Duterte ng mga confidential funds nito. 650 million pesos the whole shebang. Pero ang una mong target sa intelligence fund mo, kayo, ikaw, Franz. Kayo mga komunista, ang gusto ko, patayin. Sabihin mo na sa kanya. Pero ang, pero ang una mong target sa intelligence fund mo, kayo, ikaw, Franz. Kayo. Malaking kritiko ng confidential fund si Representative Franz Castro which robbed the Vice President at former President Duterte's the wrong way dahil sa kanyang pagbusisi at pagquestion sa paggamit ng ten transfer na some say illegally 125 billion pesos na kanyang ginastos in just 11 days noong 2022 na hiningi niya sa contingent fund na binigay sa kanya ni BBM na humingi siya ng 500 million pesos na dagdag budget at kaukulang 250 million pesos in confidential fund of which 125 million pesos lang ang binigay sa kanya. Nanggaling yung 125 million pesos na confidential fund at tinransfer kay VP Duterte sa contingent fund ng gobyerno where basically yung contingent fund is a reserve amount of money na pwedeng i-allocate ng presidente sa kanyang underlings at sa lahat ng head ng mga departments uh, to give them more funding para ma-accomplish yung new goals or yung mga hindi nasama sa general appropriations bill na budget na naipasa noong nakaraang taon. Pero the reason why some people say it's illegal is because wala namang line item para i-transfer yung 125 million pesos kasi nga walang confidential fund for like 9 years ang OVP. To be honest, hindi ko ganun quakers ganun yung 500 million pesos na confidential fund pero parang ang tone deaf naman ito. I mean, maybe she should have done it like gradually throughout her 6 years just 
amp it up, it up, it up. Like 50 million, and then 100 billion, and then 150, then blah, 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 blah. Kasi naman, bakit mo naman kasi agad nilagay siya into 500 billion pesos? Samantalang yung 9 years of OVP at dalawang taong humawak dito, ay walang confidential fund. Tapos bigla mong itataas ng 500 million? I mean, napaka-weird. Ang question ko lang is yung DepEd. Pero anyway, isinampina ng isang korte sa Quezon City si former President Rodrigo Duterte dahil sa kanyang alleged death threat sa congresswoman, not to mention yung kanyang panre-retag at him calling the Homa Kabayan Bloc as legalized terrorist organization. You know what? If being a terrorist means fighting for the people and the 99.99%, then yeah, I guess you could call them terrorist organization. This clip will probably be played out of context. Anyway, isa rin si Franz Castro sa mga nagpo-push na papasukin ang International Criminal Court sa Pilipinas upang investigahan ang umunoy extrajudicial killings ng dating presidente, though I don't think we should ever let foreign courts judge our former leaders. Maybe if the justice system has already judged Duterte and if they find him guilty, then let the ICC come in. And to be honest, kahit na ay papasukin ni BBM at Justice Secretary Crispin Remulla yung ICC, even Duterte said, you know what, you know what, let them in. Not to mention yung, yung pag-grant ng bail at imminent freedom ni Laila De Lima would cause a massive stir sa ICC na to mention kasi nga baka papasukin pa lalo. Here are some more PH news for your convenience. At sa busway, itinas na ang multa para sa mga pasaway ng motorista na illegal na gagamit ng at sa busway. Para sa first offense, mumultaan ka ng 5,000 pesos. Second offense, 10,000 pesos plus one month suspension ng driver's license at mandatory road safety seminar. Third offense ay 20,000 pesos plus one year suspension of driver's license. At fourth offense, 30,000 pesos plus recommendation to revoke the driver's license. Nakreserba ang ed sa busway na umiikot sa Kalakhang Maynila sa mga pampasaherong bus. Mga emergency vehicles katulad ng mga ambulances, fire trucks at PNP vehicles kasama na ang mga sasakyang may protocol plates from 1 to 5 na ginagamit ng mga matataas na opisyal ng gobyerno. Ang protocol plate number 1 ay para sa mga convoy na ginagamit ng presidente, number 2 para sa vice presidente, number 3 for the senate president, number 4 para sa speaker ng House of Representatives, at number 5 para sa Chief Justice of the Supreme Court. Isinusulong ng EDSA Busway at ang harsher penalties na inimplement ng MMDA, ang paggamit ng public transport at bawasan ang kotse sa daan dahil sa tila expressway para sa mga bus na gumagamit nito kesa man mas takas sa traffic sa rush hour. I'm glad this became a thing sa atin even though there's a lot of work to easing the commuters sa paggamit nito especially sa babat panaog ng mga commuters at sa footbridges which is absolutely or cumbersome kasi nga aklat pa ba ka tapos ang tataas pa nila kasi nga nasa highway yung ano there's still a lot of work to be done but you know this is a good step Mindanao Rock by 6.8 magnitude earthquake niyanig ang Mindanao noong November 17, 2023 ng 6.8 magnitude earthquake na nag-cause ng massive panic at mass evacuation dahil sa lakas ng pagyanig sa pulo. Sinasabing ang lindol ay nangyari mahigit 60 km sa ilalim at 71 km from Palomolok, South Cotabato dahil umano sa paggalaw ng Cotabato Trench. BBM on San Francisco for APEC Summit Pumunta si President Ferdinand Marcos Jr. sa San Francisco, California of the US of A para sa gaganaping Asia-Pacific Economic Cooperation Summit na ginanaap noong November 11 to November 17, 2023. Inuna niyang puntahan at i-address ang Filipino community sa California kasama na ang mga business leaders to bolster economic ties ng mga Western companies at ng Pilipinas hoping to secure pledges for more incoming businesses sa Pilipinas. And the reason why he went to the Filipino community first kasi nga, ang lalaki ng mga remittances ng mga Filipino-Californians sa ating bansa. Though it'll be kind of awkward since hindi tayo pumunta sa Belt and Road Initiative Summit ng China last time with all the commotion of anti-Chinese sentiment and the new EDCA sites, not to mention yung reciprocal access agreement na isinusulong ni BBM with Japan. Nagpagpulong din siya sa heads ng Washington State at lumagda ang dalawang bansa sa 1-2-3 agreement na nagsisignify ng deal para sa nuclear energy cooperation na malaking step sa pagkakaroon ng nuclear-related material trade from the US to the Philippines for nuclear fuel, reactors, equipments, at iba pa. I mean, I mean, nuclear power is the way forward. Although, just now, nagkaroon ng earthquake. And it would be a massive PR crisis for the government to have a meltdown. Ang Asia-Pacific Economic Cooperation Summit ay isang 
Intergovernmental Forum para sa mga nasa Asia Pacific region, kind of like whatever country lies on the Pacific Ring of Fire, minus a few countries. This is an annual meeting of leaders of the Asia Pacific region to convene on global trade partnerships at regional and global disputes and broadening of social and economic ties in the region. Here is a global slash international news for your convenience. Xi and Biden meets for APEC summit. Chinese President and CCP General Secretary Xi Jinping has arrived in the U.S. in San Francisco, California to attend the Asia-Pacific Economic Cooperation Summit, subsequently meeting with the host leader, U.S. President Joseph Biden, to engage in bilateral talks to convene upon common grounds of both countries. Both of them stayed on course and on lighter topics with regards to general agreement and strayed away from any discussion of tense relationship between between the two countries, like the tight blockade, the anti-Sino rhetoric of the U.S. presidents, and Russia's military operation in Donbas or Ukraine. The Asia-Pacific Economic Cooperation Summit is an intergovernmental forum for the countries in the Asia-Pacific region, kind of like wherever or whatever country lies on the Pacific Ring of Fire minus a few countries. This is an annual meeting of the leaders of the Asia-Pacific region to convene on global trade partnerships regional global disputes, and broadening of social, economical, and political ties. The historic meeting is a big deal as it's Chinese President Xi Jinping's first visit since 2017 under Trump, who was pretty adamant of his dislike of the Chinese government, as the White House is hoping to cool tensions with the People's Republic of China and its leaders. Of course, Russian President Vladimir Putin was absent since he has an arrest warrant from the International Criminal Court, or ICC, after his special military operation in Donbass and the entirety of Ukraine. At yan pagtatapos ng news I deem worthy recap weekly edition for roughly the third week of November 2023. Mag-suggest some more topics and or corrections to the balitas if you feel I misrepresented them in any way. Salamat sa mga panonood mga kabayang for me. Like, subscribe, and follow my links and socials on Avor Joseph that would be linked down below. So susunod ulit paalam. Pssssss!